sort of the challenges we have with MDM is the fact that um, you know, in certain software or technology areas, like it's usually like one really narrow, consistent problem that you're just trying to solve really well. Um, it's kind of a double-edged sword, but in MDM, there is seemingly unlimited uh, business challenges that we can solve, um, business problems we can solve, um, and they vary greatly by industry, by, name, by uh, domain, and, and by use case. And so what's nice about that, obviously, is that there's a ton of opportunities we have to help um, our prospects and customers provide business value. Um, the challenge we have is that from a marketing and, and, uh, and messaging perspective, um, it's very, very hard to sometimes speak to someone's specific pain when we're talking about MDM more generally. So we like to talk about is some of the, the kind of the, the most common things that we see um, from a use case perspective um, by some of the most common domains and by some of the, the, the industries that we, we, we uh, work with the most. So, so let's talk about the healthcare industry and, and, and really where MDM can uh, shine for that industry. Yeah, so I mean, health, healthcare is one of the industries that um, is probably, you know, some industries are more data driven than others. Healthcare is definitely one of the most data driven industries out there. Um, and it has not only a lot of information, but a lot, a lot of other, you know, regulatory requirements they have to meet as well. Um, and as we all know, there's a, a ton of uh, opportunity around healthcare to uh, use data to um, improve health uh, outcomes. There's pushes for uh, obviously electronic electronic medical records. So, healthcare will continue capturing more and more data over time, which which I think increases the uh, potential value for data management to improve um, the efficiency and, and um, uh, productivity of a of a healthcare organization. Right. So I, I would think that uh, mostly when I'm dealing with people in the healthcare industry, there's really three different uh, facets that they, they really want to deal with. So the first one I would talk about is is, is patient management, right? So so uh, whether you're one organization and you're passing healthcare records uh, around a hospital or a, a center, or if I'm managing uh, stuff across a, a, a wide variety of things where I have lots of different specialties, I want to be able to manage that patient's ac patient across all of his different um, touch points with my organization. So I want to make sure his healthcare records are being product that I understand that this person is the same person here as when he lived in the state, uh, a state right next to mine, right? Because he might live on the border or something like that. Uh, so patient management is really important because that really helps you understand the outcomes if you understand where he's come from and where he's going. Uh, the second one is bed management, right? So, so, and this can be bed or station, right? So if you're in a hospital, I want to leverage those rooms appropriately. So each room might have different equipment or different processes, and I want to move those people through this. And this can be true of a hospital, or it could be even like a dialysis center, right? If you're, if you're talking about station management, I want to move those people through those stations as quickly as possible, and efficiently as possible, I think is the right, the right term. And uh, the third one would be, as, as you're talking about with, the, the, with health outcomes, is understanding the, the relationship between the physician and the patient and then the outcomes themselves, right? Because I think that there's a big push in the industry for insurance really to pay for um, cost-effective outcomes as opposed to paying just for services, right? Because it's a lot cheaper for me as a, a patient to not let the patient get diabetes uh, than to... Um, just pay every time for the insulin doses and all the, the processes that happen or, or keep them on maintenance pro plans of, of uh, drugs for the rest of their lives. Right, and so to achieve that, the other thing that they have to be able to do is obviously understand who their providers are, right? Absolutely. And so pr provider is another, another domain that many of our healthcare customers ha have started with actually because um, it's high value. Um, it is, I don't want to call it simple, but it's, it's reasonably achievable, right? You typically have fewer providers than you do patients, and you're typically getting some really uh, good information about your providers. Um, you know, ultimately, you're trying to get them mapped to an MPI, uh, manage uh, information about their specialties, what offices or locations do they work at. And so um, provider is another very common uh, domain that, that most healthcare organizations struggle with, and it's a perfect fit uh, for an MDM solution. Well, and it's also important because, uh, you know, it, and it's going to sound like I'm talking about fraud, but it's not. It's, it's unintentional fraud, right? Because a lot of times the same bill can be sent from many different institutions. Because a provider is going to work for a hospital, they're going to have their own office, they're going to have their own, their all, actually their own industries into the, into and of themselves. A lot of times when they're a doctor, or a surgeon, and so you want to make sure that you're paying each thing, and everybody's getting the money for the the surgeries or the or the process that they're doing, but that they're being paid once and only once, right? So sometimes the hospital will think they're doing the doctor. A 
favor and bill for uh, the surgeon's time, but that surgeon might bill the, 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 <coughs> the, uh, the, the insurance at the same time, right? And we want to make sure that there's processes in place that recognize that this physician works with this, uh, this hospital so I can actually see the relationships and, and understand that if I get a bill for like $6,900 from both, that those might actually be the same procedure for that patient. Yep, and then the last thing that um, is also very prevalent within healthcare um, is reference data. Healthcare has a ton of reference data floating around, um, and a lot of it is, is, is sort of third-party generated. Um, so for example, procedure codes and diagnosis codes or national drug codes would be another example where every hospital organization has to have a handle on, thing, on these things the root definition of these things are usually coming from third party, um, either government or independent organizations, nonprofits that are, that are defining the standard, if you will. Every hospital has to be able to, at a minimum, have a place to store and manage that standard. And most of them also then um, want to uh, amend or extend that reference data with their own additional information. Um, that could be like, you know, just to pick on um, uh, procedure codes or diagnosis codes. Hey, here's, here's what um, is the standard. Um, here's, here's how those records are mapped in kind of reference data mappings into uh, where they exist in different applications. You might want to extend the definition, include additional information about um, the, that they're looking to store within their own application. And MDM can help solve that problem. And, and reference data, again, there's a lot of it in the healthcare space. And so it's a, it's a big challenge for, for healthcare organizations to get a handle on it. Absolutely, and we've exploded the complexity of these things too. I think that from ICD-9, the classification of, of diagnosis of diseases uh, went from like 14,000 to 70,000 when they went from ICD-9 to ICD-10. And so that, that type of data explosion really allows us to, to um, more tailor our fits for our, our, our patients, but on the other hand, it's gonna cre create a, a, a large amount of uh, confusion and, and process uh, uh, degradation if you don't really understand how things have, have moved in the industry. Yep. As you guys know, the, uh, when Hurricane Katrina came through, there was a large healthcare group that um, uh, wanted to be able to contact their providers, the, the people that work for them, and they uh, they found that their address book wasn't as up to date as they would have liked. And that's a, it's a real scenario when you know I'm trying yeah. to reach you, I really need to speak with you, and um, they weren't as able they weren't able to do that as effective, effectively as they wanted. Um, and so they selected our platform to go and build out that address book um, and that actually solve a couple of problems at the same time. One was uh, being able to find and match data together from different systems. So they had an active directory record and for an employee that an HR system. Um, and then they needed, like I said, that contact detail. Um, so um, uh, since all healthcare organizations have employees, I think employees is, is uh, one of those things, just like reference data, but it's actually, um, it's changing far more frequently even than just reference data. Yep. Yeah, and I think that's the, the thing, is that so much time has been spent on a lot of systems to manage the uh, employee-physician uh, relationship that sometimes a, a lot of these other things where you're dealing with the uh, employees and where they live get short shrift. Yes, yeah. yeah. All right, so hopefully that gives uh, an idea of some of the, the uh, use cases we've seen for healthcare out, out in industry, and, and there's a ton more, um, obviously, but those are the, the, probably the highlights from what we've seen. Yes.